Hey again, so like I mentioned in the previous video, that was cut short just because the sheer amount of content that went into that one uh, concept, which I wasn't quite expecting beforehand. So no more intro and we'll get straight back in to our character class. If we start with the move forward, first thing we want to do is we want to find out whether or not we actually have a controller for this character. So if, um, and in fact, we can do a second check as well. Yeah, we'll just say if, and the first condition is controller. You could say if controller isn't equal to null or is valid, but just checking if controller exists in that way does the same thing. And then we'll find out also ampersand, so double ampersand for and, if we have a controller and if the value isn't equal to zero. So the value is just relating to this value here. So we're not gonna do anything through this function if the user isn't pressing anything. So if both of those come back true, so we have a valid controller for this pawn, or character and the user's pressing something, then what we want to do is we're going to set the rotation first of all. So just getting a reference to our current rotation, which is in type of F rotator. And then we'll just give this the name rotation. This is a variable we're creating. I'm gonna set this equal to the controller's uh, get control rotation. Okay, so again, controller's been set on one of the classes, one of the parent classes, so this is how we know that we should have a reference to this. And this is why I want to make sure it's valid, because we want to call a function within that class. And of course, if a variable in one of the parent classes hadn't been set, then we'll be trying to call a function on something that doesn't exist, and that will give us issues. So next thing is we're going to create another rotator for the Yule rotation. Uh, and this is quite simply, uh, the Yule is the Y value, so we're going to say zero. So we're going to uh, disregard the x value and we want the rotation dot yule and then we will set the z to zero as well or the roll uh, because again we can disregard that we just want the yule okay and then we're going to use these in a moment so the last thing we want before we use these is we're going to set another value this is going to be a vector to create a vector we use f vector i'm going to call this one direction and we're going to get the f rotation matrix which is a maths function we're going to pass in the your rotation, which is why we set this uh, just above. And we're going to get the unit axis from this. So get unit axis. And this is important. Don't uh, don't use the get unit axis. Uh, it's axis. And then the axis is e axis x, like so. Okay, so we've now got the direction that we want to move. And finally, we're just going to use the uh, movement component. And to do this, we can call the function add movement input. Uh, we want to add in the direction. So the direction we want to go and the value, which will work out the speed, which is what we're passing in here. So just in case you're unfamiliar again with what the value is, uh, if you have something like the WASD setup, uh, then you're going to be going between zero and one, or well, not between, you will get either zero and one. So if you press W, then you have one, you have the full input. If you release W, then you have zero, which is gonna stop the movement. If you've got an analog, of course, if you push forward, you're going between zero and one then. Uh, so you can push it half when you get 0.5, which is how you get into like this slow walk state sprint state, things like that, if you have that set up. Um, but that's that's why we're passing in the value. A lot of the move right stuff is very similar. So I'm actually just going to copy most of this. We definitely want the check again for the controller and the value. And this is the great thing about naming all, all of these the same, rather than have like move right value, move forward value, just call it value and then you can reuse it. Uh, because it's just an argument being passed in to this function, you can't have any naming clashes or anything. For this, we want the rotation and the your rotation again, which is exactly the same. The only thing we want to change is the y axis this time. So we'll change this from x to y. And then the add move input function is fine again because we're getting the direction, but this time from the y axis. So we're moving left to right. And again, the value, which is going to be based on what button you're pressing. So that is the move right. Um, very, very simple. And then to finish up, I will let you go soon. We have two more functions. So we have add controller your input for our turn at rate. So this is still calling, if you look at it, this is actually quite interesting, still calling the add controller your input the same as we are with the mouse. But like I said, because it kind of dampens it with the controller, uh, with the control pad, we are just going to override this and um, multiply it by the term rate, basically. So we're doing very similar things, but this is why we've put this one into a function and the other one we can call directly from the pawn class. So what we want to do is on the add controller your input, we want to get the value. So again, value that's being passed in multiplied by the base turn rate and then we're going to multiply this by delta seconds to make sure this is frame rate independent so uh, multiplied by get world so to get the delta seconds in c plus plus you use get world 
and then the function call from inside of this is get delta seconds. Nice and simple, and then we can close that out and we have our U input for, for the uh, turn at rate. So this is turning around. And then the next one we're gonna add is look up. And that is that function done by the way, nice and simple. And this is very similar again. So in fact, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna change this to add controller pitch input. Again, we want to multiply this by the value that we're passing in. Uh, this isn't gonna be the base turn rate. This will be the uh, base look up at rate. And then finally, we're gonna multiply this once again by the uh, world delta seconds. So with that done, if you have the ability to with Visual Studios, you can hit Control, Shift, and B to compile. That is everything done. So we can build this and start testing that it is working. And this is also where I found out I've added loads of typos or tiny little things which are out of place. Okay, so that had quite a bit of information to go through. Uh, probably took about a minute to compile that. So again, you may be, oh, there we go. Took 150 seconds to compile, so two minutes or more. So yours may be quite a long compile as well, because uh, if you didn't do that from the previous video, obviously we've added all of the header stuff and all of the code into this class now. And of course, if you don't have Visual Studios installed, the full version, then you're just gonna need to hit compile in the engine just here. Let's do the same thing, just make sure we do a hot reload to get all of this updating. Now with that done, I am actually going to implement this into its own blueprint class now. So I'm gonna to go to our public folder, characters, or we'll find our character class and create a blueprint class based on this. Now the reason I got rid of the one previously in the small demo I did is because these hot reloads can be a little bit hit and miss. Whereas if you've got all of the code compiled, when you create a class, it should have all of the components ready to go. If you create this class and you're missing a spring arm component or something's not in the right place, it probably just means the hot reload. And obviously if you've got the compile succeed, it probably just means that the hot reload didn't work. So you just need to close the project and then open it back up and it should all be updated without any extra compilation or anything. But with all of that said, I'm gonna to go to the blueprints folder and I'm gonna create the BP underscore character. And there we go. So we can see how it shows that's pretty cool. It didn't work for me, which is helpful because I can demonstrate what I was just talking about. So we can see the class is the YouTube character class. However, we don't have anything that we've added in. We don't have, yeah, we don't have anything. <laughs> Normally you get a few bits, uh, but we don't have anything whatsoever. So we can hit compile. Uh, sometimes you can just see if recompiling it will uh, and closing this will update it now that we've got this uh, in existence. But generally, if you get this issue, it does mean that you just need to close the project and open it again. Okay, so the compile finished. We're just going to open this back up in the full Blueprint Editor. Still don't have the things that we want. Uh, all of this, the capture component, the arrow component, and the mesh component, that's just all part of the standard character class. That's nothing that we've added. So I'm going to close this, open it, and hopefully show you all of the components. Okay, hello again. Nothing would have actually happened for you. I've just closed the project and opened it back up. So we're gonna go again into our blueprint class and there we go. So like I said, nothing was recompiled or done whilst the uh, recording was paused, but just by closing it, the hot compile didn't work. Uh, so the project has now refreshed itself. We've got our spring arm component or spring arm comp as we've called it, the camera comp and the mesh comp. So all of these are ours, the ones that we've created. If we go into the viewport, we can see we've got full control over these so we can rotate these around. And like I said, we can add things like additional spring arm length, which is what we're gonna be doing in Blueprint, but I'll leave that for another video. The only other things is if we go back here, we can see we've added some extra values to the camera category here. The class by default comes with the crouched eye height and the base eye height, and we've actually locked these off, so we should probably make these Blueprint uh, or edit anywhere so that we can do the same thing here so we can change the turn rate. So if we just do a quick change, again, quite handy to, to see this in action. So if we go back to our base class, we've made our variables uh, blueprint read only. We can make this edit anywhere and we'll make the base term rate edit anywhere. And again, we can just recompile this quickly. Uh, and that means we should now have the capability to edit that in blueprint. So if we wanted to quickly change how fast the character turns when using the controller, then that should allow us to do so. It's going to compile. Oh, I've done that wrong. So <laughs> make a copy of this if you've followed along. Uh, we cannot have visible anywhere and edit anywhere. So these are two different uh, specifiers. Again, you can learn more about C++ specifiers on the documentation but they both do similar things so you can't have both in one argument so we want to keep the blueprint read only so i changed the wrong one so visible anywhere means that we can see it anywhere but we can't edit it so what we want to do is change the visible anywhere to edit anywhere and then compile i couldn't work out in the back of my mind then why that had uh, failed to compile but um yeah so make sure you keep the specifiers correct and 
like I said, if, if that didn't make sense and have a quick read up on that, but um, this basically changed the editability and this will allow us to at least view the type, if not change it by making it read only. Okay, so back in Unreal, I'll just make sure I compile this to get rid of the error log here as well. Close the class so that hopefully it will update this with a hot reload. And there we go. So thankfully that hot reload worked. So we now don't have these grayed out, which means we can quickly change the turn rate that the character has. That is the character ready to go. Still not implemented in the game, but we will be doing that very soon. In the next video, I'm just going to come back in. It won't be C++ based the next video, but we're going to be setting some things up on the... Uh, the spring arm, the rotation of the camera, the mesh, and all of the movement, things like that, and getting that ready to go in our project so that we have something to move around. And then we can start, like I said, looking at specific functions like the overlaps and the ray tracing when we have a character to control. And hopefully those videos will be a lot more condensed for you guys. I think this is going to be the longest thing to set up. It's one of the biggest classes. Everything else is going to be very kind of quick hit function calls and stuff like that and showing how they work uh, rather than setting up an entire class for the project. So I'm going to leave that video here. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.